God got to study in today, and the Lord just kind of changed it all around. And um, <clears throat> on the deal, I know we preach through Revelation, and when I, and preaching through Revelation, I, I, I hit on this topic a little bit. But uh, this is something that's really uh, troubling the church as a whole. I want to preach on the apostate movement. The apostate movement. Acts chapter 21, I'm going to read verse 21. If you're there, say amen. amen. <clears throat> and they are informed of thee that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after the customs. Let's pray. God, we love you. We come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, God, for another day. We thank you, God, for all your blessings. And Lord, thank you, God, for the songs that's been sung, Lord. And God, I'm glad that we know we got access to the throne room, Lord. And help me right now, God, as I try to uh, uh, address this subject, Lord. I pray, God, you would help me, to, Lord, just to stay focused on what you would have me to say, God. Guide my mouth, guide my mind, God. And I pray, God, you would just encourage us tonight, God, through your word, Lord. And help us, dear Lord, to just be able to see what's going on in the world. And we'll praise you for all you do, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 says this, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now the two verses I read to you right there are the only two verses in the entire Bible that the word apostasy in the Greek language is actually mentioned. That word apostasy in the first verse we read said forsaking Moses. That, wor that word is apostasy or apostate. And then where it says except there come a great falling away. That word is the same word that is used in Acts chapter 21 verse 21. Now the word apostasy, it comes from the Greek word apostasia. It means defection from truth or falling away, or to forsake. Now, a lot of times when you say somebody's apostate, or some of you, uh, you talk about apostasy, we think about a, a great turning away. We think about somebody that was in church, and they say, I'm no longer going to serve the Lord. I don't believe in that, and I don't believe, you know. Listen, you can be apostate and be just a little bit off. Grant spoke last night. At Masters Men. If you missed it, you missed a blessing. It was it was great. And Grant talked about how that how that a lot of times we want to just get right close to the line. Amen. And that's where a lot of people want to live, right close to the line. And and the thing about it is, you know, uh, if and I gave them an example last night. If me being on this pulpit, and I'm on, you look at me, if me being on this pulpit, at the top of this pulpit, is the center of God's will, every time I take a step down, Brother Jerry, I'm getting further away. If I take another step down, I'm getting further away. That's headed towards apostasy. Now, if I'm down here, I am completely off the pulpit. You know what? I'm still close. I can still look like I'm saved. I can still act like I'm saved. I can still say all the right things, Dale, and be apostate. That's the problem we're facing in church today. Everybody, let me tell you something. Everybody that's got the big crowds ain't the ones doing it right. You can watch Joel Osteen, there'll be 70,000 people there, and you ain't going to get one iota of gospel out of it. I'm just telling you, folks, uh, uh, the apostate, and, and even though there's only two verses in the New Testament that actually addresses the word apostate, it's all throughout the New Testament. It's all throughout the Bible. Uh, John MacArthur said this. Now listen, no one sets out to become an apostate. It is never the result of one abrupt, drastic turn away from the Lord. Instead, apostasy is most often the product of a pattern of sinful compromises that harden and gradually steer the professing believer away from the Lord. Nobody wakes up in the morning and say, I'm going to commit apostasy, I'm going to turn from the Lord, and I'm going to get completely out. 
But it, it's almost like I, 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 I've told this story multiple times. I talked to a guy one time. It's been about 20 years ago, and I invited him to church. He said, it's probably been 30 years since I've been in church. I said, why'd you get out? He said, well, I went to church. And we was having choir practice, and there was no room in the choir for me to sit down. And the devil said, they don't need you. He said, so I started missing on Wednesday night. And it got a little easier. So then I started missing on Sunday night. And it got a little easier. Next thing you know, it's 30 years later and I ain't been to church. That's how it happens. And if we're not careful, if we're not careful as Christians, we, we, we let things get to us like that, that that really shouldn't get to us. And I'm just saying, so real apostasy is not necessarily turning from the Lord, but it's also turning from the truth of the Lord. There are people, there are preachers with King James Bible apostate right now. Just because you got a King James Bible, just because you're wearing a suit and a tie, just because you're carrying the name of a preacher, just, I, I, <laughs> Jamie, I was, I was watching this here guy on, on YouTube the other day, and uh, it was a, a black preacher, and I mean, he was hammering down. I like it like that, amen? He said, bless God, what's wrong with being called preacher? What's wrong with being called Pastor? He said, now, he said, now bishop ain't good enough. And he was talking about the black church. He said, bishop ain't good enough in the black church no more. He said, now, he said, I heard of a man the other day. He wanted to call, call himself a cardinal. He said, for long in the black church, we're going to have a pope. You see what I'm talking about? It's real easy to start moving away. And if we ain't careful, and, and I'll get into some of this in a little bit, if we're not careful, we'll fall right into that. How about the prosperity gospel? Let me tell you something. You ain't got no business listening to T.D. Jakes. We ain't got no business listening to Joel Osteen. We ain't got no business listening to Creflo Dollar. Amen? We ain't got no business listening to Greg Locke. We ain't got no business, we ain't got no business listening to that. Because it's, it's not gospel. It's not the gospel. They, they perverted it just enough To be apostate. Got false teaching on about and the word of God. You got false teaching about uh, tithing, false teaching about all, all kind of things in the Bible. But the Bible said, and, and the book of Jude is where I, I, I had uh, uh, planned on preaching tonight. But in Jude chapter 1, verse 18 says this How that they told you that there should be mockers in the last days who should walk after their own ungodly lust. That's what they're doing today. So I'm going to use Psalms uh, 53, and I want to preach a little while on the apostate movement. Uh, let's look at their creed or their doctrine or their teaching. The Bible says in Psalms 53, verse 1, it's a psalm of David, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. There is none that doeth good. Some say, well, they don't, they don't teach that there is no God. I beg to differ with you. Psalms, what, Psalms 10 verse 4 says this, listen, the wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Uh, the family Bible notes commentary says this, pride leads the wicked to forsake God and to act as if he has no existence, as if no one would ever call them to an account for their sins. That's where all these big TV preachers are today. They, uh, you know, it's a crying shame when you got somebody like T.D. Jakes gets caught in an adulterous affair with a man. And stands up and basically plays it off, Brother Donald. And everybody goes along with it. I'm telling you, folks, being saved is a serious thing. We was, talk, was, it, was it yesterday? Was it last time we were talking about uh, the God of the Old Testament and grace and stuff like that? You better be glad you live under grace. Amen. We better be glad we live under grace because the God of the Old Testament would strike all of us dead probably. But they act like there's no accountability. They, 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 they act like no, no, no one wants to be accountable anymore. E even, even some of our local preachers, they don't, don't want to be accountable anymore. We're all accountable. 
I'm accountable to Jamie. Jamie's accountable to me. I'm accountable to Jackie. I'm accountable. We're all accountable to each other. We, we ought to be there for each other and stand in and do what's right. Understand, T.D. Jake, Stephen Furtick, Joel Osteen, Greg Locke, you, you name all, all these mega church preachers living in 10 and 20,000, 20 million dollar mansions. That's a false gospel. Let me tell you something. When you get up and you preach anything other than this right here, you're denying the existence of the God that we worship. Amen? Amen. That, that's their creed. Let's look at their character. They're all corrupt. Psalms 53, verse 1, again, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they. That word corrupt comes from the Greek word, shakatha, to decay, cast off, destroy, lose, now listen, to mar. Y'all know what that means, to mar? That means to, to mess up something a little bit I, 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 and, and, and to mar the gospel. That's what I kind of got as I was studying it. They want to take Scripture, Jackie, and they want to give you just enough Bible to make you think it's right, but they're pulling it out of t a context and they're using it for their own greedy gain. They twist the scripture. Listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you. T.D. Jakes don't believe in the Trinity. T.D. Jakes is one of those Jesus only preachers. We know from listening, we know Joel Osteen is prosperity gospel. Joel Osteen would be a great motivational speaker, but he ain't no Christian. And I'm going to probably get some comments on this, this message, but I really don't care. Amen. It's time, it's, time we stu it's time that we stand up and preach the Word, amen, and tell it like it is. Satan ain't going to come to you with a red suit on and a pitchfork. He's going to come to you dressed like Joel Osteen. And I'm going to be honest with you, I hope ain't nobody in this church or listening on YouTube and Facebook watching that idiot Ken, Kenneth Copeland. That joker's a nut. And you can go ahead and mark it down and tell them I said so. You talk about prosperity gospel. Listen, folks, they got, they got just enough scripture, and they, they'll give you just enough scripture to pull you in. And you got widows and, and people on, on, on fixed income sending their money in, sending their money in, and sending their money in. Let me tell you something that's apostate. They don't care about you. I, read, I, I saw an interview sometime, one time with this guy, and I, I can't remember which one. He, I, I want to think it was, if I'm not mistaken, and I'm trying, not, I'm trying not to be mean, and I'm trying not to be funny. Joyce Myers, that's the one I'm, I was going to say, the woman that had the, fake, the, the, uh, the plastic surgery and looked like a duck. <laughs> but I, but I, I didn't want to say that, but I did. This guy, if I'm not mistaken, worked for her ministry. He said, now this is what he said, Brother Ralph. The, the money would come in they, and with the prayer request. He said they would open the envelopes, take out the money, and throw it in the trash can. I know people personally that sent money into these people like that. That is corrupt. They do not care about you. All they want is your money. It's apostate. That's the character. Let's look at their ignorance. Psalms 53, uh, verse 4 tells, tells us this. They have workers of iniquity, have the workers of iniquity no knowledge, who eateth up my people as they eat bread. What does that sound like I've been preaching about? They, are, they have not called upon God. Let me tell you something. Now, no, notice what it said right there, Charlie. They have not called upon God. So if the message is not from God, where's the message from? If they're, not getting the, if they're not getting the message from God, where's the message from? We know that Satan knows the Bible. When Satan, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, Satan quoted Psalms 91 to Jesus. He, mis, he, he misquoted it just a little bit, and that's what they're doing. They are ignorant of the Word of God. If the message is not from God, it's from Satan. And, let me, and the thing about it is, Jamie... 
All those 70,000 people that sit under Joel Osteen week after week after week, they're just as guilty as him. You ought to have enough Bible knowledge that you would know if somebody got in this pulpit and preached what was thus against the Word of God. Amen? Amen. You ought to have enough Bible knowledge about you. The st- Matthew Henry said this, the state of apostasy is worse than the state of ignorance. As I was studying this, I want to, I want to say that, that, Brother Ralph, that they're ignorant of the Word of God. But some of them, I believe, know what the Word of God says and still do it. Yeah, come on, Psalms 53, verse 5 says this. There were they in great fear where no fear was. For God has scattered the bones of him that encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame because God hath despised them. I believe with all my heart, and I hate, and you, 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 hear this, you hear this phrase put out there. I believe some of them sold their soul to the devil. I believe that with all my heart. Just for what they can get on this side. I believe some of them, and, I, and I, I'm, trying to be, I'm trying to be good. I believe some of these preachers I'm talking about are demon-possessed. I believe that with all my heart. Ain't a doubt in my mind. I, I, you, if, you, if you see the way they act on, on TV and some, some of the things they say, ain't no way in the world you can be a man of God and, and say the things they say. I saw a preacher that I had confidence in, Brother Don. I had, li- I had watched him multiple times. He was preaching for John Hagee. He was on the pulpit with John Hagee. John Hagee was sitting right there. And this guy had started quoting some things. And as he was quoting this, it, he, he, was, he was saying one word, but it was sounding like, Kevin, he was saying another word. And when he was saying it, it was coming across. Oh, everybody was laughing. But it sounded like a it sounded like cuss words that he was saying. He wasn't saying cuss words, but that's what it sounded like. Yeah. Adam, I got too much respect for this pulpit and that Bible to get up in this pulpit and act like a fool. Their distress. They. I, let me just give you some scripture. Second Timothy chapter three verse eight. Now as Janus and Jambri withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. Titus chapter 1, verse 16. They profess they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. The Bible tells us in Psalm and Romans chapter 1 how that when you go so far, God will turn you over to a reprobate mind that you'll believe a lie and be damned. Folks, some I believe some of these folks have gone too far. I believe that with all my heart. And the thing about it is, and what about all these people that's following them? Oh, I'm telling you right now, you talk to some people, and I, they'll, they'll chew you up one side and down the other about Joel Osteen. You talk to some people, and they'll, they'll, you, you go up in the, in the Charlotte area and start telling them about how, how corrupt and how uh, false doctrine Stephen Furtick is. Oh, you'll be wanting to get, you'll be wanting to get in a fight. Well, listen, we've got to stand against it. If we're going to stand for what's right, look at their doom. What, what, what's in store? Psalms 53, verse 5. They were there in great fear where no fear was, for God has scattered the bones of them and encampeth against thee. Thou hast put them to shame because God has despised them. They're, God's going to put them to shame. 
The Bible tells us in Psalms chapter 1, which is one of my favorite chapters, uh, verse 4 and 6, a lot of times we don't want to go that far and quote verse 4 and 6, but the Bible talks about how the uh, blessed is the man that seeketh, uh, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, or sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. We love quoting that. But verse 4 says this, The ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Now, how much sore punishment or is somebody going to have to endure that stands up and preaches a false doctrine or a false gospel? Now listen. When a person becomes apostate, there ain't no coming back. When you cross that line, you cross the line for good. See, that, that, that's, how we, that's why we got to be very careful. I'm free will Baptist to the bone. I believe I'm free will Baptist. I believe free will Baptist doctrine. But I'm telling you right now, God's line is a lot further than our line is. Somebody missed a couple of weeks in church. Oh, Lord, they done backslid. No, they ain't. God's line's a whole lot further, Grant, than what me and you even know about. But I'm telling you, God does have a line, Brother Charlie. Take your Bible, uh, take your Bible and turn over to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter, one, uh, chapter 6, verse 1 through 6. You might want to mark this down in your Bible. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go into perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. This will we do if God permit. Now listen. For it is impossible... For those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. I believe some of these preachers have gone too far to come back. I believe that with all my heart. And I'm not, I, I'm not saying that to be judgmental. I'm just saying I've, I've, known, I've known people that I, in my lifetime, I've known people, Richard, that crossed that line. I told you about the, the two guys down in Conway. They, they, they went to a church. I believe both of them passed away by now. But they went to a church. They would go to the altar, Jackie, and they would pray, and they would pray, and they would pray. And they would get up and go back to their seat, lost as they could be. And one of them said, said something to this effect one time. I believe I crossed God's deadline. When you reject God and you reject God and you reject God and you reject God, after a while, God says, okay, if that's how you want to live, I'll let you live that way. And see, the thing about it is, you ain't got to go out and live like the world. You ain't got to go out and be, and, and, and be a, a Satanist. You ain't got to go out and be a witch. You ain't got to go out and do all those. You can do this in church. You can do this under the guise of being a Christian. How else can you explain pastors that commit adultery? With, 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 with ladies in the church or pastors over the years that, that come after this. We was talking about this last night, and it's been out for a few years, so I'm just going to go ahead and tell it. There was a guy that I, I loved. Adam, I'm telling you right now, I, I never met the, guy, the, the man, Kevin, but I, I'd listen to him on YouTube. His name was Ravi Zacharias. I mean, awesome Bible teacher. Awesome. And when he died, it came out that he just about every uh, city he'd go to, he'd find a prostitute. 
How can you explain that? How can you have somebody, Jack, uh, uh, Jamie, that gets up and teaches the Word of God and defends the Word of God and lives like that? i said this before. Too many Christians in church get to the point where they think they're buddies with God. You ain't God's buddy. God is God, and you're not God, and you're not holy, and we don't even deserve to stand in the same presence of God. And I'm telling you right now, we need to live our life in the, in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Amen? Because I'm telling you, hey, ain't none of us above reproach, and ain't none of us above falling. But glory to God, I, I know I fell a bunch of times over the years. But glory, I'm telling you, when I fall, I know I got to get back up. And I know 1 John 1, 9 is there for me. And all I got to do is confess my sin, and he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sin, glory to God. And I'm not going to commit apostasy. I might do a lot of stupid stuff. But that ain't going to be one of them. Not as long as I'm in my right mind. Be careful. Listen, but be careful who you listen to. Be careful of the music you listen to. And I'm, I'm still talking Christian. <laughs> listen, you sit down and talk with some of these gospel singers that come through. I've heard people tell of gospel groups back off the stage while other groups were up there singing and praising the Lord and people shouting back there making fun of the people. I've heard tell about gospel groups that come in and, and these people uh, uh, come in and they, they go to church and they, they sing the gospel music and then go out and go clubbing after they leave church. I'll tell you something, folks, we've got to be careful. Being a Christian is serious. Being a Christian is serious. And I'm going to listen to me. I don't know everything. And I, 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 I saw this on Facebook, and I reposted this on Facebook. I don't think I'm, I'm that great of a preacher, but glory to God, I got a great book to preach out of. Amen. Amen. And I can promise you, Jackie, I don't know everything in this book. Kevin, I don't know everything in this book. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm ignorant of a lot of things. But I promise you one thing. As your pastor, I'll try to lead you in the right way. And if you ever have any questions about anything, if you ever have any concerns about anything, if you'll call me, I'll talk with you about it. I've had people call me over the years and say, Preacher, what do you think about this such and such preacher? And I, 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 I got enough gumption. I'll tell you what I think about them. Amen? Listen, folks. Let's be careful. Everything that glitters ain't gold. And everything carrying a Bible ain't right with God. Be careful. What's the old? Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above, He is looking down with love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. For oh, the Father up above, He is looking down with love. Oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. It's a serious thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And when the Bible tells us we're going to give an account of every idle word, everything, you will. You will. Amen. I love you.